Ladies, the postpartum workouts that you do after having your baby need to look a lot different than the prenatal workouts that you did before having your baby. If they do not, you might not see the progress that you're after and you might actually be doing more damage than good. I'm going to explain why and also give you some advice about what you should be doing instead and I'm going to do it right now. What's up ladies? Hey, Jared Beckstrand here, doctor of physical therapy, postpartum fitness specialist, mommytummyfix.com. And today I wanted to jump in here and shoot a quick video answering the question that I get asked the most from patients and clients that I work with. And that is relating to postpartum exercise, what is safe? What should I be doing? What should I be avoiding? And how can I make my fitness journey even more effective? So that's what I wanted to help you guys out with today. You can see I've got some exercises up here. I'm gonna to touch on some of the most common and the most popular exercises. My hope is to be able to teach you this principle that you can apply it to literally any exercise in any workout that you will be doing from here on out. And so I can't get into this without explaining the anatomy behind it. So what I've done is I've drawn a torso up here. So those are the sides, that's the belly button. You've got four muscles in your core. The most superficial muscle is called your rectus abdominis. That's that six pack muscle. That's the one that's up here in blue that runs right down the front from the bottom of your rib cage to the top of your pelvis. Um, now, when you're pregnant and with a growing pregnancy, the circumference of your waist increases. And as your waist gets bigger, it increases the stress that's placed on your abdominal wall. Now, this rectus abdominis muscle is joined together by some connective tissue right down the middle that is kind of the weak link in that system. And as the stomach gets bigger, it can cause that connective tissue to stretch and even tear in a condition that we refer to as diastasis recti. Now, here's the thing about diastasis recti. If you've carried a baby into your third trimester, you have had this condition. 100% of women who get to their third trimester in pregnancy experience some degree of stretching and even separation of their, of their linea alba, of, this, of that connective tissue. 65% of women still have this condition six weeks after giving birth. Finally, this last number that I have written up here, they looked at these same women one year after giving birth and they found this diastasis recti condition was still present in 35% of them. The thing is, it's not checked for regularly at postpartum care visits, so it's certainly something to be aware of. If we do have that condition, we want to avoid exercises that are going to aggressively contract that muscle because it's basically contracting an injured area. It's trying to work over an injury. And so that's the muscle that anytime we bring our torso down in this direction and trunk flexion is what we call that, we're going to be using that muscle. Or anytime we bring our pelvis up and kind of like rock our pelvis and our hips up towards us, that's going to activate that muscle as well. So all that being said, let's jump into this and start talking about some of these exercises. And so your sit-ups and your crunches, two exercises designed specifically to introduce trunk flexion to stress out that muscle. I think that for the most part, we understand that those are going to be a no if we have that diastasis, diastasis condition going on. Okay, so what about a plank? What if I'm not folding forward? What if I'm just holding a plank statically? Well, a plank also primarily taxes that rectus abdominis muscle as its resisting flexion. Yeah, you're holding a nice straight line position, but it's that rectus abdominis that is under the stress trying to hold that position. So that one is going to get the red X in the no column as well. However, if we roll over onto our side and if we roll over into a side plank, no longer are we resisting straight trunk flexion. Now we're actually resisting a lateral flexion motion. We're kicking on external and internal obliques more than that rectus abdominis muscle. And so while planks are a no, side planks get a green yes in this case. Okay, what about push-ups? Jared, I wanna work my, my shoulders, my arms, my chest. I wanna work my upper body at home. Push-ups is a fantastic exercise to do that, but I would come back and say, what is a push-up but a moving plank? We're still holding that same position, relatively, throughout the push-up motion as we're going up and down. It's a plank with motion. For that reason, I'm gonna say no on the push-ups. However, if you have a pair of dumbbells at home, you can absolutely roll over onto your back and perform a bench press exercise. 
all of a sudden we've eliminated the stress from that rectus abdominis. There's no longer any strain in that area as you're laying flat on your back. A bench press is a great way to work your chest and arms and shoulders at home if you've got the dumbbells available. So that one's definitely a green light. Okay, and then finally the last two that I always get asked about, Jared, can I do squats at home and can I run? My answers there are yes, absolutely. But the thing that you need to be aware of with those two exercises is increasing your intra-abdominal pressure, meaning as you hold your breath and as you strain, you're increasing the pressure in your abdomen. If you have any sort of pelvic floor pain or pelvic floor dysfunction, incontinence, things like that, keep in mind that increasing that pressure in there might cause you some pain or some other problems. So just keep that in mind as you're doing those last exercises. Okay, so what does all this mean? Does that mean that if you've ever had a child that you'll never be able to do these exercises again? Fortunately, my answer to that is no. You can actually do these exercises. You will absolutely be able to do them again. In fact, our goal should be to get these no's and to get them over here into the yes category. Now, how do we do that? The key is working your deepest abdominal layer. So again, I mentioned you've got four abdominal layers. You want to avoid contracting that rectus abdominis muscle, but we want to promote activity in the transverse abdominis muscle. Your transverse abdominis starts at your lower back, wraps around to your front, and it actually connects right underneath this linea alba, or this connective tissue that gets stretched out with diastasis recti. When we talk about postpartum core rehab, when we talk about rehabbing a diastasis separation, it's that deepest core muscle, it's that transverse abdominis that we want to activate in order to heal that gap, in order to seal that gap up, and in order to provide you with adequate core strength to be able to do these exercises again. Now, if you're interested in learning more about that, I've got a whole program that's dedicated to helping you to take this and put it over here. You can learn more about it at mommytummyfix.com. I've also got it linked down in the description below. Um, that will take you to the program that I created as a postpartum fitness specialist to help you to address this exact issue. And so I hope that you guys head over there. I hope you check that out. I hope that helps you out. Also, we do have a promo code going on right now. If you enter MOMMY30 at checkout, that's going to save you $30 off the price of that program. That's the lowest price you'll ever be able to get it. I promise you that. Um, one more thing down in the link below. If you're just interested in um, figuring this out, if you're interested in, okay, what do these exercises look like and, and how should I be doing these exercises? I do have a free 21-day challenge that you can, it's, it's a 21-day diastasis recti challenge that you can access that's going to be basically three weeks of exercises. We're going to be activating that transverse abdominis and uh, hopefully help you guys out there. So check the link down below. It's also in the description. You'll find the free 21 day challenge. If you guys are interested in more videos about this topic, if I can help you out more, check out this playlist, check out this video. Those are two great resources for you. If you haven't subscribed to Tone and Titan yet here on YouTube, hit this circle button right here. I'd love to see you back for more videos. Leave me comments, leave me questions, and we'll see you again soon.